Welcome to The Cap, where we are here to speak with college reps and other professionals in the field of college admissions to help answer all your questions and guide you through every step of the process. So if you're serious about college admissions, you've come to the right place. Are you ready? Let's talk about it. And now, here's your host, Dr. John Durante. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and I am here to introduce you to college admissions representatives and other professionals in the field of college admissions. Our purpose is to serve you, the students and parents, so that you may gain insight straight from the people who ultimately make the decisions. Regardless of whether you apply to a particular school being highlighted in a given episode, you should listen to all of them, as each guest will give you tremendous insight and advice on every aspect of the college admissions process, prompting you to come up with your own follow-up questions for when you visit campus or meet with a college admissions representative yourself. Don't forget to visit our website, www.collegeadmissionstalk.com, or the show notes of each episode to access the alphabetical list of all the colleges available with the related audio link to the right of each school. The alphabetical list provides you with on-demand access to all of the episodes so that you may listen whenever you wish. And if you want to receive links to episodes before they are released on the podcast, along with other related resources, please fill out the email opt-in form also available on our website and in the show notes of each episode. Lastly, please email me with any questions or comments at collegeadmissionstalk at gmail.com. So are you ready? Let's talk about it. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today Pamela Franco, who's an admissions officer at UC San Diego. Pamela, thank you so much for being here today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk about all the wonderful things UC San Diego has to offer. Well, we're truly looking forward to it, Pamela. So let's start by me asking you, can you explain the UC system as a whole and how does UC San Diego fit within it, including any differences or similarities within the UC campuses? Definitely. So the University of California, UC, is a public university system in the state of California. Now, California has two public university systems, the UCs and CSUs, along with the California Community College system. The UC system began more than 150 years ago and is currently comprised of 10 schools, nine of which enroll undergraduates. Our schools are found throughout the state from NorCal all the way down to us in San Diego. We are all research-based and the UC system has more than 800 research centers, institutes, laboratories, and programs. Now UC San Diego specifically, we were founded in 1960, But prior to that, we were still part of the UC system. Originally, we were a marine field station for Berkeley, and then we became Scripps Institute of Oceanography, and then we transitioned to the UC we are today. Now, what we are today is student-centered, research-focused. We are a tier one research institution. We're also service-oriented. In terms of geography, we are the most southern UC located in La Jolla, which is the northern section of the city of San Diego. Now, every UC offers a great experience, but we all definitely have our own personality. At UC San Diego, I always like to say that we're a community that loves to learn. Well, thank you so much for the overview of the entire UC system. We really appreciate it. But Pamela, what else can you tell us about UC San Diego that makes it so appealing for so many students to want to apply and ultimately attend? Yeah, so I always lead with some rankings. We were ranked sixth among the nation's top public colleges this past year by U.S. News and World. In that same report, we were ranked 20th in best global universities, but we're going to be consistently ranked high in a lot of different reports. So if anyone listening is curious, definitely feel free to utilize the Internet, explore some of our other rankings. Um, I just don't want to keep talking about all of them because it's a little boring. Um, We have a lot of really appealing features, though. So as a tier one research institution, we receive a ton of research funding every year that I have been there, which is almost eight years now. Our research budget has been over a billion dollars and it really climbs every year. So this previous year, we received $1.64 billion of research funding. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's awesome. Our undergrads, they all have the opportunity to participate in meaningful research. 
And a lot of our majors already have that embedded into their curriculum, which is great. Um, in addition to that, we do have a lot of spaces and resources for our students to engage in research outside of the classroom. One of those spaces is our undergrad research hub where students are connected with a mentor. They have amazing scholarship opportunities, fellowships. They've been able to publish and present at national conferences. We also um, we have another great resource center called The Basement, which is a space on campus for students from all majors, promotes meaningful change and the opportunity for entrepreneurship. So if you have a business idea or a product idea and you have no idea where to start, you're going to want to start with the basement. Now, those were a few stats, some resource centers, but I also like some more tangible examples. So I just have a really quick story um, that I think encapsulates our opportunities and really speaks to our appeal. Um, in admissions, we hire student workers to lead our tours, and I've gotten to know some of them really well through my time at UC San Diego. Um, a few years ago now, one of those students was a double major, psychology and global health, and they were invited to the Clinton Global Initiative University Conference in Boston. And it was a great opportunity, but she could not afford the travel component, um, so she reached out to her department. They were very aware of the importance of this for her resume, for her career, so they were able to cover those extra costs so she could still attend. Now, this student was also published during her time at UC San Diego and then went on to Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health for her master's. Her undergrad time with us is just a great example of opportunities our students have and how we support them. I think that's what makes UC San Diego stand out. We want you to learn in the classroom, but to then implement what you're learning in a real world environment. And we have the resources to support you in that. And then, you know, we have great beaches, great weather. So it's easy to fall in love with UC San Diego. Well, thank you so much for sharing that story. We really appreciate it. And it's definitely an example of how you absolutely do stand out. I didn't know you have $1.64 billion of research funding, which is phenomenal. So let me ask, can you discuss the campus life and the student organizations available to students at UC San Diego and what opportunities there are for students to get involved and build that sense of community that I know that the UC San Diego campus fosters. Definitely. So as a large public university, and we have over 32,000 undergraduate students, there's a ton of opportunities to get involved. We have over 500 clubs and organizations on campus, and they range from cultural clubs, dance clubs, pre-professional organizations, you name it, we do probably have it. Um, I'm really excited that a few years ago, our athletics department was welcomed into the Big West Conference and we became a Division I school. And that's really exciting for our campus community as a whole. I know everyone in San Diego was so proud of SDSU this past year in March Madness. So hopefully <laughs> it'll be our turn one day. <laughs> That'll be a few years, but I'm excited that I, I do think it's going to happen. I'm a big basketball <laughs> fan. So go Tritons. Your question also addressed a sense of community, and that brings to mind our college system, which is really unique to UC San Diego and very much tied to community. Uh, the best way that I have found to describe our college system is if you think of UC San Diego as a city, we have eight neighborhoods or colleges. Each neighborhood or college is its own community. So your residence halls are going to be at your college, dining halls, markets, restaurants. Our student government is organized by college. We have some clubs that are tied to your college. The colleges will host events for the campus. Uh, in addition to that, you're also gonna have extra academic advisors available through your college for just general questions. So as such, our college system really offers a strong support to our students, but also fosters a sense of community. What makes it, I think, extra unique is that each college is also gonna have its own philosophy, which is then mirrored in different general education curriculum. So the idea is you're going to be living with students at your college that are different majors than you, but you are all interested in learning about that philosophy or core value of your shared college. So ultimately, the idea is to connect our like-minded students that might not be the same major, but again, we're interested in that same philosophy. So it's almost like creating a smaller liberal arts style school in this large research-based university. So we're trying to give students the best of both worlds. 
Um, again, we're a large campus at 32,000 students. We have about 1,200 acres as well. So we wanna make sure students have multiple ways and opportunities to build communities. So you know, you're gonna get to know a student um, in your major really organically, just from classes, research study groups, but with our college system, it breaks down our large campus into these smaller, more personal and approachable communities. And all of our colleges are right by each other. They're all walking distance to our library. Um, and even if you're assigned one college and your friend might be assigned another, you're going to have access to every college's dining halls, restaurants, markets, and public spaces. So we really are just like neighborhoods within a city. It's a really unique and very engaging way to build community on campus. Well, we really appreciate that overview. It truly sounds like there's something for everyone, over 500 clubs, D1 Athletics. I really appreciate how you talked about your college system as a community. And by the way, I read a statistic recently that your retention rate, that's the number or the percentage of students that return after their first year, 95%. 95%, which is truly astonishing. I believe the national average is around 69%. And again, it's a testament to the work that you do in admissions to make sure that you have the right students on your campus, but also the great work that the UC San Diego system does to make sure that the students are happy and wanting to return year after year once they're on your campus. So again, thank you so much, Pamela. We really appreciate it. And can you walk us through the UC San Diego admissions process, including the timeline and requirements for applicants? Any insight will be greatly appreciated as students always wanna know what happens once they submit that application to you? Definitely. And this might be a bit of a long answer, so I apologize up front. <laughs> <laughs> um, the application process itself is fairly simple, but it is time consuming. So it's important to note that none of the UCs accept the common application. Instead, we have one application for all of the UCs. So if you're applying to UC San Diego, um, UCLA, and Davis, for example, you're not going to be submitting three separate applications. You're just submitting one application, the UC application. Now in that, you're gonna indicate which UCs you wish to apply to, and then based on your selection, you'll be prompted to the appropriate screens for each UC. And it's important also to note, you don't need to apply to the same major throughout the UCs. You can apply to microbiology with us and fill in at UCLA, it's totally fine. Um, now, everything on our application is self-reported, which includes your coursework. So it's really important that you have access to your transcript when you're applying and you do not go based on memory when you're reporting your grades and courses. While we don't accept any documents or transcripts during the application process itself, if you are accepted and decide to enroll with us, we do request a final high school transcript. And at that point, we're checking to make sure that what you put on the application matches your transcript. So another important component to remember, the UCs do not take letters of recommendation or any extra documents. With that being said, there will be certain majors at certain campuses that might have extra steps or supplemental applications or portfolios for you to submit. If you are applying to a major or department that does have that supplemental application component, you're gonna be notified in the application pretty much a beige text box is gonna pop up in the application after you select that major. That text box will give you a link regarding the supplemental uh, submission. Now for UC San Diego right now, they're all optional but strongly encouraged and are mainly found within our arts and music programs. And those are optional portfolios. In terms of a timeline, the application for the UC system is always open August 1st. You can start filling it out then, but the submission period are the two months of October and November. So you can have everything filled out, ready to go August 1st, but you can't click that submit button until October. Now, it's important to note, it doesn't matter when in that time frame of October and November you apply. We don't timestamp the application when you submit it. It has no bearing on your acceptance. With that being said, I do always tell students, don't wait until the last minute because you don't want to be rushing through that application at 11 p.m. on November 30th. Like Cinderella, it's going to be gone at midnight. So <laughs> try and do it in advance. Um, I believe your question also referred to requirements. So really quickly, I do want to cover that for everyone. We are asking our first year freshman students to complete 15 A through G courses, 11 of which must be complete by the end of your junior year. 
Now, for those of you listening that are not in California and are wondering, what is an A through G course? (laughs) That's okay. It's just how California organizes high school subjects. A is history, B is English, it continues on. Now, the vast majority of states are going to have that same minimum requirement that you're going to need to graduate that we're checking for, those A through G courses. Um, It very often matches up. It's just not called A through G in other states. With that being said, we do have a year that is a requirement of a visual or performing arts. That is not a requirement in every state. So if you are a student that is in that situation where your state does not require a music or an arts course to graduate and you don't have one, I would encourage you to reach out to one of the UC's admissions offices that you're interested in so we can go into more detail on other ways you might be able to meet that requirement. Sorry, I warned you that was a long answer. Sorry about that. (laughs) Not at all. That was terrific. Thank you so much for the overview. Mm -hmm. Just to sum up a few pieces, one application for all of the UC schools. You are not on the Common App. Your application is called, in fact, the UC application. You may apply, by the way, to different majors to different schools within the UC system students. And of course, you said that there are no letters of recommendation, but you gave great advice in terms of checking the requirements of the particular major, as some do require a supplemental essay. I also appreciate you talking about the 15 A through G courses. And I also wanted to mention, Pamela, that if there are any links that you want me to include in the show note to explain any of this or more, please send it to me. And of course, I'll make it available to the students and parents in the show notes. I always offer the link to the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. But again, if there's anything further that you want to share, send it to me and I'll put it in the show notes for the students and parents. I also understand that UC San Diego is test blind. Pamela, can you explain what exactly does that mean? And what are the elements you look at when reviewing a student's application? Yeah, great question. So test blind for us means we're not using the SAT or ACT for admissions at all. Throughout the UC system, actually, we're not considering SAT or ACT, so it is not a component in our review or our decision anymore. Even if you send us a score, we are not going to see it in our review, and it is not used for admission decisions. Now, at UC San Diego, to give you an idea of some of our numbers that we've seen recently, for first-year students that entered in fall 2022, We saw 131,245 applicants. We were able to accept about 31,000 of those students for an overall admit rate of 23.7%. Now the middle GPA range for those students was between a 4.1 and 4.3. And it's important to note, although we do have strong and competitive GPAs, we see a range of GPAs throughout our accepted pool. What we're really looking for ultimately are well-rounded students. We're looking for sustained extracurriculars. Volunteering is a large component in our review process, along with leadership. Did you hold any positions in clubs you were a part of? Were you a captain of a sports team? Leadership, though, can also be less formal. So, for example, if you're the eldest sibling and are responsible for picking up your younger siblings from school and watching them until your parents come home, that's an example of leadership and you're displaying qualities we're looking for in an applicant. Um, You know, we might have some students that are applying that are really involved in a ton of clubs and love all of that engagement, and that's great. Other students might be really passionate about that one thing only, and they devote a lot of their time to that. And then another student might not have extracurriculars because they have a part-time job. One of these isn't better than the others. We understand that students are all different. What we do wanna see is you challenging yourself academically within your high school environment. We'd love to see sustained involvement in clubs or extracurriculars if possible, whether that's in your school or community. And if you're unable to participate in clubs and there's a reason why, we do ask that you share that with us. You know, um, we've seen students that don't participate because they take a bus and it's two hours one way to get to their high school. We would like to know that. And we take everything that you share into consideration. But as we mentioned earlier, we're not taking letters of recommendation or conducting interviews. So if you want to tell us something, you need to tell us in the application because we're not going to have another avenue to find that out. Um, There are two additional comment sections within our application that you can report that kind of information. And then one of our personal insight questions also gives you the opportunity to address challenges that you might have overcome throughout your high school. 
What's up, podcast friends? I'm happy to share that we've teamed up with Dormco to make your dorm decorating a lot easier. Why Dormco? They offer quality and durability, affordability, and a wide selection for bedding to storage solutions and everything in between for your dorm room. So if you or anyone you know is looking to decorate your dorm, see the affiliate partnership link in the show notes for Dormco, your one stop for stylish, affordable, and quality dorm essentials. Please note that if you make a purchase through any of our affiliate links, the podcast gets a commission, but rest assured that we would only promote products that we believe in and feel would benefit our listeners. Thank you all and best wishes. Well, thank you so much for sharing the data, the overview, and of course, the great pieces of advice. So Pamela, let's dig just a little deeper into your overall application review process do you use the student's high school GPA as indicated on their transcript, or do you recalculate the GPA using your own metrics? If so, what do you look at from a student's academic record, and how do you evaluate them? Great question. So we ask for a GPA of 3.0 or better for California residents and 3.4 or better if you're a non-resident. We do recalculate, and the UC GPA is unique because of how we recalculate. So here at the UC system, we're not looking at ninth grade for GPA purposes. We feel it's often a transitional year for students. So while we're checking to make sure you have those requirements, those A through G courses, ninth through 12th grade, we're not calculating your ninth grade into your GPA for admission at all. We are instead looking at your two middle years of high school, 10th and 11th grade. Obviously, 12th grade, you're going to be applying that fall. So we don't know what your 12th year grades are going to be. That's leaving us 10th and 11th. Um, you will also weigh a GPA. So for California residents, that includes UC approved honors courses, AP courses, IB courses, and college courses. For out of state applicants, we're going to be weighing AP and IB courses along with college courses. Now you don't need to calculate your UC GPA. We're going to do that ourselves. So you again, want to make sure that you are inputting your transcript as it appears from your high school. Um, but if you are curious, I'll make sure to share a link with you, John. Um, a lot of students do like to calculate their UC GPA, and we have a website that gives you those instructions. Well, thank you so much. And of course, that'll be very helpful. And I also appreciate that you talked about the fact that you do recalculate the average put on the high school transcript. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that in general, it's a 3.0 for in-state students a 3.4 for out-of-state students. So of course it does differ a little bit for your in-state and out-of-state students. And I also appreciate that you mentioned ninth grade of high school. You look at it as a transition year. So you don't take it into account in terms of your overall GPA calculation. That's great insight. You also mentioned earlier that you test blind. Pamela, I was wondering, what are your thoughts on where to test optional trend, right? Most schools are going test optional throughout the country. What are your thoughts on where the test optional trends will be a few years from now? So I can't speak for other universities. It is definitely interesting to ponder. We've seen a lot of changes um, with standardized testing these last few years in particular. Um, ultimately, I think universities are going to do what is best for their institution. Now, at the UC system, we've thought critically about standardized tests for quite some time. We've actually had a task force created that was prior to COVID, composed of faculty from all of the UC schools, and that goal was to research the use of standardized testing for UC admissions. For us at the UC, we're going to continue to be test blind, so within four years, that's where I see our system, you know, just not utilizing that at all. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And does UC San Diego accept AP, IB, or dual enrollment courses for college credit? Yeah, we do. So for AP exams, we're issuing eight quarter units typically, sometimes four units depending on the test, and that's for scores of three, four, or five. Now, IB schools, if a student graduates with an IB diploma score of 30 or more, they will automatically be awarded six quarter units of work and then eight quarter units for higher level IB scores of five, six, or seven. In terms of college credit, the vast majority of college credit taken in high school from an accredited institution will transfer over. We're seeing most students taking pretty common courses like intro to psychology, microeconomics, pre-calculus, English composition. Those are all gonna be transferable. 
it's really only when a student enrolls in a very specific course that we within the UC system do not offer that we can't give credit. Um, for example, I had a student once that had taken a midwifery course that was not transferable, but the vast majority are. Well, we appreciate that. And I know that the PIQs are used in the UC system. And the PIQs, of course, stand for Personal Insight Questions. Can you explain what they are and perhaps share an example that really stuck with you? And what advice would you share with prospective students in terms of what to think about when replying to these PIQs or Personal Insight Questions? Of course. So as I mentioned earlier, the UCs have one application. You're only going to be submitting one set of PIQs, even if you're applying to multiple UCs. You are going to choose four out of eight personal insight questions to answer, and each response is limited to 350 words max. We encourage students to choose the questions that are most relevant to them and that best reflect their individual experiences. All questions are equal and are given equal consideration in the review process, so that means there's no advantage or disadvantage to your selection. Now, it's important to keep in mind they are not traditional essays. So that means you do not need an intro, a body, and a conclusion. With only 350 words, you are welcome to dive right in with answering it. We encourage you to use I statements and to really be your own advocate. Keep in mind, again, we don't accept letters of recommendation, so this is your time to share and really tell us about yourself in your own words. Now, my best advice is to imagine just someone asking you these questions face-to-face -face and approach answering them more like a written interview than a creative writing assignment or an essay for school. Um, ultimately, the personal insight questions are just that, a personal reflection of you, the student. Now, in strong PIQs, we're typically learning something new or the student is expounding on something that was found elsewhere in the application and they are clearly answering the prompt. Some really good ones that have stuck in my mind over the years um, one student wrote about their journey to becoming an Eagle Scout, and that was answering the leadership personal insight question. Another student detailed how they grew up in a very rural area, almost like a food desert. They discussed how they opened up a nutritious food stand within their community. They pretty much made their own farm. It was really cool. And, and that was answering what have you done to make your school or community a better place. Um, on the flip side, some missed opportunities in PIQs, and these happen frequently. Um, it's usually when a student uses more flowery language and as such does not really answer the question or they're attempting to be clever and answer the personal insight question as if they were a fly on the wall or from the perspective <laughs> of their cat. Um, we've had students write their answers in song lyrics. It's a little bit harder to find that answer and pull that out of those more creative writing assignments style um, personal insight questions. <laughs> so again, approaching it more like a written interview is going to be your best way to tackle the PIQs. Well, those are great examples and insights in terms of what to do or not when diving into the PIQs. So Pamela, thank you so much. I'm also curious, can you explain what opportunities does UC San Diego offer students that may have had an IEP while in high school in terms of helping to ensure that they continue to be successful once they're on your beautiful campus? Yeah, so we have an office for students with disabilities, OSD for short, and that office serves undergraduate, graduate, and professional school students with documented disabilities, along with student veterans and faculty and staff who provide accommodations. So OSD works with a variety of departments and programs across our campus to provide access to learning and internship opportunities for students with disabilities. And the OSD, they also employ student staff with disabilities and train them in customer service, front and back management, team building, and universal design in physical and electronic environments. Well, thank you so much. And Pamela, I was also curious about students aspiring to play sports while in college. What advice do you have for prospective student athletes in terms of making their intentions to play known? So on our athletics website, and I'll make sure to share that with you as well so you can share it out with your listeners, we have a section that is for recruits. And within that section, you can find a recruiting questionnaire that will help put you in contact with the appropriate people at the appropriate time and in line with NCAA rules and regulations. I would also encourage you to connect with your high school coach. They should be aware of the appropriate steps to take. Um, but just kind of going on our athletics website and exploring that, that'll give you all of the steps that you need to 
really let your intentions be known that you're interested. Well, thank you so much. This has been a phenomenal conversation. Pamela, before I get to my last question, I was just curious, is there a question that I didn't ask that you wish I had or any other topic about UC San Diego that just didn't come up that you want to leave with us at this point? Oh my gosh, you're putting me on the spot now. So I think you've really covered a lot of bases. Um, On a more personal note, I'm from New York and I recruit often on the East Coast for UC San Diego. I do talk to students and let them know I am from New York. And if they have just questions about the cultural differences, East Coast, West Coast to ask me. Um, So just to share with some of your listeners that might not be from California or have ever visited, if you're from the East Coast, I always let students know there's actually really good pizza in San Diego, um, (laughs) which you would not think. We have our own little Italy section, which is great. So really delicious food. Um, People still tell me I walk too fast because it's a much slower pace here. So just like cultural differences are some things that I, I address. But I think you've done a great job of just talking and figuring out what makes UC San Diego unique. So thank you. Well, thank you. And like you said, you're originally from New York, but you have the great pleasure of living right outside of the campus there in beautiful San Diego, California. So Pamela, thank you for your time and insight today. This has been phenomenal. Unfortunately, it does lead us to the last question, which is what are your top three pieces of advice that you would provide a student and their parents getting ready for the college admissions process? Yeah. So first, I would say do your research. There are a ton of colleges out there, and many of them might be a good fit for you. The internet allows you such a great opportunity to explore school without even stepping foot onto campus. So I always encourage students to utilize a lot of different websites. The college admissions website that you're interested in, since many schools are going to have different deadlines and requirements, but also to look at whatever major you're interested in. That department's site specifically their research opportunities. Reading a school's newspaper is a great way to get additional insight, hearing it from the students directly. Um, And, you know, since COVID, a lot of colleges and universities, including UC San Diego, have really built up their YouTube pages and their social media. So checking on there. um, So first, do your research. My second piece of advice is to keep an open mind, not only with your college choices, but with majors. So colleges and universities might have majors you have never even heard of, but would be a really great fit for your ultimate career goals. I know I've counseled more than a handful of students that thought they wanted an engineering or computer science, but after talking with them and then they explored our different websites, realized their interests lie more in cognitive science or data science. Uh, They just didn't do that research. So do your research, keep an open mind, and then finally just breathe, enjoy your senior (laughs) year. I know... (laughs) That sometimes is easier said than done, but try and have fun because everything's going to work out fine. Well, Pamela, once again, thank you so much. This has been a phenomenal conversation. Your insight and your time today, truly appreciated. I'm so happy as I know that this is going to help a lot of students and their parents as they navigate through the college admissions process. We hope to have you again, Pamela. You were awesome. Thanks again. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to tell a friend and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. I am your host, John Durante, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Cap. What's up, podcast friends? I'm happy to announce that we've teamed up with some fantastic affiliate partners to further enhance your overall college journey. So do you or someone you know need stylish dorm decor, trendy college apparel, or top-notch test prep? Whether it's creating a cozy home away from home, flaunting the latest in college apparel, or securing top-notch test prep help, we've got you covered. Check out our affiliate links in the show notes within each of these categories, which we believe will help you, our listeners. Please note that if you make a purchase through any of our affiliate links, the podcast does get a small commission, but rest assured that we would only promote products that we believe in and feel would benefit you, our listeners. So check out the links in the show notes and share with anyone you think may benefit. Thank you all and best wishes.